Radhe Radhe, spiritual good morning to everyone in this recap video for our Bhagavad Gita recitation class for chapter 2. On this special Tulsi Viva day, Mommy and I are here to present a brief summary of what was covered. Radhe Radhe. Sharing the screen, we're going to see the cover slide followed by each of the verses. So in today's session, we covered chapter 2, verses 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Up on the screen, one by one, will be each of the verses with their catchphrases. Mommy will go ahead and recite all of them first. Thank you, Gagan. So verse number 11. Shri Bhagavanu Vacha Ashochyanan Vashochastvam Pragnyavadanshya Bhashya Se Gata soon, gata soon, shacha. Nanu show chanti panditaha. Na tweva hum jatuna sum. Na twam name janadhipaha. Na chayva na bhavishyamaha. Sarveva mataf param. Dehi no smin yatha dehe Kaumaram yauvanam jara Tatha dehantara praptihi Dheeras tatra namuyati Matras parshas tu konteya Shi toshna sukha dukha daha Agama paino nityaha Tastitikshasva bharata Yam hina vyathayante te Purusham purusharshabha Samadukha sukham dhiram Somrittatvaya kalpate So let's see uh, uh, some words, one word from each verse. We look at this word, Asho Chayan. Asho Chayan, that means not worthy of grief. Then from verse number 12, we will learn this word, Jana Adipaha. Jana Adipaha means kings. Then verse number 13. Let's learn the word Dehinaha. Dehinaha means of the embodied. From verse number 14, we learn the word Matra Sparshaha. That means contact of the senses with the sense objects. And verse number 15, we will learn a very simple word, which is sama. Sama means equipoised. The meaning is very, very important. Equipoised. With that, I'll give it over to you, Gagan. Yeah, so chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. Let's just understand them very briefly. Catchphrase for chapter 2, verse 11, as a question, worthless wisdom? It's interesting because most people would expect that as the Bhagavad Gita is now unfolding and with Arjun lamenting and having his sense of grief, Sri Krishna is going to, of course, kindly and compassionately commiserate with him. But instead, we look at the commentary. Swamiji says that, he, you know, Sri Krishna knocks the wind out of Arjun's arguments. Sri Krishna says that his words do sound like they are words of wisdom, but it is people who are wise who do not lament or mourn for, you know, the dead or the living. So there's no grief to be had. Therefore, Arjun's wisdom is actually in a way worthless from a spiritual standpoint. However, wisdom indeed is here and in all the verses from Sri Krishna himself. Bhishma Pitamaha is given as a quick example in the commentary for this verse, talking about surrendering to God and showing that love and devotion. 
in his duties as a warrior. Chapter 2, verse 12, elixir of life. That's a question mark. Does such a thing exist? Where is it? Is that a portion? But again, this is now the first time we get an introduction to the concept of immortality via the concept of the soul. We'll talk eventually about reincarnation. So this is Sri Krishna saying that there was never a time when any Arjun or the kings on the other side or he himself were dead and they shall always be. So again, talking about the continuity of the soul. Chapter 2, verse 13, continual closet, a common and popular verse that's quoted often, really here talking about how the soul moves from body to body, lifetime after lifetime. But in fact, a step further is that based on molecules and biology as well, our body is constantly changing. So within a fixed lifetime, that soul itself is going through different kinds of bodies in terms of their form as well, their shape or their look. So our bodies, they say, in fact, completely sort of our look and all changes every seven years because of the molecular cell structure. So it's interesting how, you know, the soul takes on a new body after death. Death in this case is the material sense, but the soul continues to live on and on. The analogy here, continual closet, is sort of like clothes. We change our clothes ever so often. So it's interesting to see that the body keeps on changing clothes. The body is continuous in that lifetime. But the soul within the body, that is the one that is continuous always. And it keeps on discarding the body and taking on a new one each time there is death and birth. Chapter 2, verse 14, seasonal sense. Sri Krishna here tells Arjun that these are you know, senses and the sense objects that they get attracted to. Everything has a temporary nature. There is happiness, but there's also distress. Just like the seasons come and go, there is winter and there is summer. So think about the response if someone next time asks you, what is your favorite season? As we learn more about yoga and want to be equipoised, the word mummy mentioned for the next verse, we shall see that maybe having that middle ground balance is what we strive towards, being equanimous towards all the seasons. So that's chapter 2, verse 14. And then finally, chapter 2, verse 15, building on from senses, now we have sensational steadiness. So this is where Sri Krishna uses the word equipoised, having that similar summer, same set of responses or attitude towards different contrasting pairs of opposites. So again, happiness, distress, and other pairs of opposites, they come and go. And so in the commentary, we encourage you to take a look at the terms sat, chit, anand. We are trying to get away from the material attraction and the misery it brings. It is really towards the infinite, the ever eternal and the ever fresh bliss that God has and God offers. So again, sat, chit, anand. So that is the essence of chapter two verses 11 through 15. We shall hear them one more time. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Ashochyanan Vashochastvam Pragnyavadanshu Bhasha Se Gata Suna Gata Sumshacha Nanu Shochanti Panditaha Na Tvevaham Jatunasam Na tvam neme janadhi paha, na chaiva na bhavishyamaha, sarve vayamataf param. Dehi no smin yatha dehi, kaumaram yauvanam jara, tatha dehantara praptihi. Dheeras tatra nam huyati, matras parshastu konteya, shitoshna sukha dukha daha, agama payino nityaha, tanstitikshasva bharata, yam hina vyathayante te. Purusham purusharshabha samadukha sukham dhiram somritvaya kalpate 
So I want to mention two things in uh, two verses. It happened so that there is one place right in the middle. R is coming. So that is where we use it as a visarg. That is which verse? I think verse number 13. Gagan, if we can see that. Yes. Tatha dehantar praptir. So in English it is written praptir. But as we know, this is half ra, right in the middle of the pada. So we are going to use it as a visarg. We'll say tatha dehantar praptihi. Similarly, in verse number 14, I noticed in the second pada, Agama Payino Nityas. Yes, this is half sir, right in the middle. We are not going to say as sir. We will say Agama Payino Nityaha. We will use it as a visarg. So these are the two points to be noted here. With that, I think it helps uh, for all of you to learn the chanting and of course understand the little meaning. Over to you, Gagan. That's it. Thank you, Mommy. Once again, happy Tulsi Viva wishes to everybody and spiritual progress along the way. We look forward to having you in the next session, presently scheduled for Saturday, November 12th, 2022. Till then, thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe.